Welcome to Real Talk, where I give real answers to real questions from real worship leaders. If you are a real worship leader with a real question and you want a real answer, head right here and submit your question for a future episode. Got some good questions this week? Let's talk about it. I'm looking for advice on how to navigate issues with my other vocalist not harmonizing when I lead. When she leads songs, I always harmonize with her and try not to overpower her for obvious reasons that she's leading. Her and I have the same tone and sound a lot alike when we sing together, so I've asked her many times to try to sing lower. We have a vocalist that sings the higher notes, and she says, I'm just going to worship, which yes, is good, but how am I supposed to lead when she sings my part? What if I'm trying to repeat a certain part and the band messes up because they can't hear my voice? I don't want to come off like a child that's saying, Mom, she won't let me lead, but this is an issue I have as the worship leader. Please help. I understand your frustration. I, I was thinking as I was reading through that, like oftentimes I have people sing the melody with me, like other vocalists on my team, but usually it is somebody who has a different vocal tone than me. Usually it's a female singing melody with me. I feel like that can work well when you have a male voice and a female voice both singing melody and it adds something different to it. But if you have two females with the same vocal tone who are singing the same exact thing, then it, in my mind it's almost like the guitarists where you have two acoustic guitar players on the team and they're both playing the same exact chord voicings and the same exact strum pattern and it's just like two people playing the, the same thing and it doesn't really add anything to the team. So from a musical perspective, I think it's very similar in that way where we need to understand why we want certain things to happen. So this person probably doesn't understand musically what happens when they sing the same part that you're singing, which is essentially, it just, it just muddies the, the sound vocally and makes it more confusing. Now, I, I think there could be a case to be made where it's okay for them to sing the melody along with you. And this is something that I heard Passion Band talk about a while ago now. They were talking about how they've got, you know, five vocalists or whatever it is leading on a Sunday because they have a big stage. And they said, we only ever give usually the standard is we only ever give one person the harmony part. Why? Because the main sound of the congregation that the congregation is going to sing with is the melody. So we want to reinforce the melody. So even though they have five singers, one other person is going to sing the harmony part, but then there's three other people who are going to sing the melody part to reinforce that part. Now, when it comes to the mix of the song, I assume that those three other people who are singing the melody are pulled down quite significantly in the mix, so there's no confusion as to who's leading what part. So I'm just throwing out a different option there for you to think about this in a slightly different way. But I would assume that the actual problem here is that this person does not know how to sing harmony. I, th I it's, it's my gut feeling that they aren't singing harmony because they don't know how to sing harmony. And their excuse of, I'm just going to worship, is really just a deflection from, I don't know how to sing harmony in these songs, and so I'm just gonna do whatever I'm comfortable with. That's my gut feeling, which means that then it becomes your job to teach them the harmony part. First of all, uh, I guess we need to teach them why they should be singing the harmony part, which is you can tell them some of the things that you just told me. You can tell them that it's confusing for the team when you're both singing the same part. I think you could also tell them that it muddies the musical waters, so to speak. I think you could also play a recording back for your team. If you've got a live stream, pull that up some rehearsal and say, hey, I just want us to listen to this recording of the song and it's not just for this vocalist but they're going to hear themselves in the mix as well but for everybody on the team i think it's a good exercise to say let's listen to ourselves and see what we did well and what we can do better and if you've never done that exercise with your team chances are your team has probably never or rarely heard what they sound like when they play from an outsider perspective not like i'm listening as i'm playing along but for from like an objective perspective. We're just gonna listen to it coming through the speakers of our sound system. 
not playing along, but for the sole intention of listening to how we sound. And you play the song, and then at the end, say, okay, what did we do well? What could we do better? And in that, people are going to be more critical of themselves than other people, and they will be listening to their part, and this vocalist might just say, wow, that was confusing when I sang the same part that you sang. And then they see that, and then you can provide the solution. Okay, you can sing the lower harmony part here. And then they say, if I'm being honest, I don't, I don't really know how to do that. And then you can say, well, let me teach you. So I encourage you that you aren't that far off from the solution. I think what you need to do is show this person why they should be singing the lower harmony part, which is so that your band isn't confused and your congregation isn't confused about who's leading the song and who to follow. Also, because it will enhance the musicianship of your team, the musical quality of it, because right now you're just both singing the same part and it doesn't add anything necessarily. So teach them that first and then actually teach them the harmony part so that they know what to sing. I'm the only worship leader apart from the pastor my church has. People say I do it well and say they want to see me leading, but I don't play a musical instrument or sing. Do I really have a part to play in leading a worship service? I guess I'm confused as to what your definition of a worship leader is. And not that your definition is necessarily wrong, but typically people say, people say I'm good at worship leading, but I don't play an instrument, I only sing, so can I lead worship? But you're saying, I don't play an instrument and I don't sing. So my question to you is, what are you leading in the service that people are saying you are a good a good worship leader. Because in my vocabulary, a worship leader is usually the person who leads worship. So I'm just I'm just throwing that out there because I'm trying to think what you might mean by that. And I guess that there are other people in the service who facilitate the flow of the worship gathering. So you might come up and lead a time of prayer, or you might welcome people into the church service. You might lead a call to worship, so on and so forth. Do I really have a part to play in leading a worship service? Well, it sounds like you already are playing a part in leading the worship service. If you're able to do something where people say that you do whatever part you're doing, you're doing it well. So yeah, I don't know if I would necessarily call that in my specific church, like the worship leader position, although it, it could serve in many of the same functions. But maybe the, the ultimate question that you're asking is, is there space for somebody who doesn't lead the music and who isn't the pastor to speak and lead parts of the service? To which I would answer, yes. I think that that is actually something that we need to focus more on as the church, where it's not just the pastor and the worship leader doing everything during the service, because I think that kind of subtly communicates that we're the only ones who can do things in this church, which there doesn't need to be leadership from the elders and the leaders in the church. But that doesn't mean that they have to lead every prayer or lead every speaking transition or read every scripture reading. So I think that in that sense, you're actually on to something that a lot of churches miss out on. And this is something that I've been focused on in my churches, trying to get more people involved. So let's just talk about other ways that you could quote unquote lead worship, meaning you have a part in the worship service. Number one, you can welcome people into worship and lead the call to worship, meaning you read scripture at the beginning and you set up the, you know, the, the rest of the worship gathering by focusing people on the worthiness of God so that they have something to respond to. And the way that we do that is through reading scripture and pointing them to what God has said about himself and even commands from God himself to worship him. And then we allow that to lead us into our time of musical worship. The other thing you can do is you can pray during your gatherings. You don't need to be the worship leader and you don't need to be the pastor to do that. You can have prayers of confession. You can have prayers of supplication where you're praying for things specifically. You can have prayers of adoration where you're just thanking God for who he is and what he's done. You can lead that part. You can lead the time of giving and you can encourage people during that time and you can remind them why we give, why God has called us 
to give. And that in and of itself can be an act of worship. I guess I'm, th- I'm thinking out loud here. That is an act of worship. So in a sense, you are leading worship because you're leading the time of giving, and giving is an act of worship. So on and so forth. There are a bunch of different elements to the worship gathering that you can lead that don't require music that I guess would technically make you a worship leader. So all that to say, yes, you have a part in leading your worship service, even if you don't sing or play an instrument. And we probably need more of those people in our churches. Now, if you are leading times like that and you struggle with what to say whenever you lead those times, I've got something for you. It's called Five Worship Speaking Transitions You Can Use This Sunday. And I suppose they aren't necessarily just reserved for musical worship leaders, but anybody can use them who speaks during a worship service. So if that's you or if you're a worship leader leading the musical part of worship leading, then check out that down in the description below. I'll link it down there. It is Five Worship Speaking Transitions written out for you word for word that you can use this Sunday. They're based on scripture, so you never have to worry about saying something unscriptural. They're the perfect length, like a minute to a minute and a half, and most of that is just reading scripture. And also, I don't just give you the word-for-word script, but I also give you bullet points that you can memorize so that whenever you allow the worship speaking transition to come out, it comes out naturally, and it doesn't sound like you're just reading it off of a piece of paper. So if you're interested in that, check that out down in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Till I see you in the next video, Keep leading worship well.